a personal anecdote, I've been laid off uh, earlier in the year because of funding issues. Everybody were basically released of their duties. I had skin in a game in a way, but I was preparing for it because I knew it could happen. Let's say if you work in startups, if you join a tech sector, which is budding or there is some risks because you kind of can, you know, you have a gut feel, you can gauge the risk. You should start preparing. And this is what really originated those ideas of exactly what you should be doing. So it doesn't matter what comes, you're actually, you know, ready. I tried a lot of different things and came up with a very specific, I guess, four to five principles or quite like strategies of some tactical implementation, which definitely could benefit anyone ultimately in UX or in tech. But Max, since you have a lot of skin in the game, that's gonna be very, I guess, relevant to you, but everyone else, because the best way to prepare for layoffs, and this is maybe, you know, frame this quote somewhere and print it out, is when you actually are not laid off or when you're doing well, because that's when you prepare for a rough times, you know, like all those different peaks are never gonna last. There's always change. And if you get too comfortable, well, then you're gonna suffer at some point or you're gonna face uncertainty or challenges. Now, this first point and a suggestion, really, everybody who's working in tech should read this book, Who Moved My Cheese? It's a very thin book. It's tops 100 pages or so. You can flip through it and, and get a lot of that gist by uh, Dr. Spencer Johnson. In that book, it's basically all about change management and preparation for these uncertain times and describes this tale of mice in like this maze. And everyone really in our lives, we're those mice who, let's say, get the cheese. And we know that if we take certain route in our day-to-day -day scenarios, we're gonna always get the cheese. This is where we get comfortable. All different hats you could be wearing, let's say, to look ahead and kind of not get comfortable and seek bigger opportunities. I discovered this book by a total accident because one of the people who joined the team I was in roughly maybe seven to 10 years ago, they joined and left the team within four or five months. And I just, like at that point, I couldn't comprehend how could someone join such a good position and then leave just after a few months because everything seemed to be fine, like the culture and everything jazzed up. And I was asking like, what's going on? And, and they're just, oh, I just got better position and I'm moving on. And they did, they got more senior position, better pay, obviously. And the only thing what they gave me was this book. <laughs> they said, okay, read this or as a suggestion, as a reference, kind of like this is gonna explain it. At that point I read it and I was like, okay, I get it sort of, but it didn't resonate until these like, you know, later years as I was going through my like my own career shaping it i read that book and i realized yeah there is something to it because you always should be seeking better pastures doesn't matter how good you are right now again layoffs happen across the board all those different companies here are obviously big names like google zillow next door yada 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 you know those names but a lot of the people got laid off from actual mature environment from finance sector which almost like is untouchable so nothing is untouchable anymore you are your own success maker. It's on you to actually set yourself up for success. And this kind of brings me to the next point. You need to start acting like your own CEO. And this is a big one from the per perspective that a lot of, I guess, designers or researchers who, let's say, consult, a lot of them kind of went full time and did consultancies or agencies or they formed one man bands because they understood that the can earn more that way, that, you know, it's up to them to sometimes address your career. It depends where you live to. Let's say in certain regions, that could be the only way you're gonna do UX because no other firms are hiring actual UX designers. You might be one and only basically creating your own agency and being a freelancer first and kind of, you know, being your own fortune maker. But this mindset to kind of flip the side and understand that you are a partner to any business, whilst you're gonna embed, augment, culturally adapt, be friendly, jolly with the team, you kind of need to like reflect that, again, it's different parties and everything at business is transactional. Like you are just a number. You're not a number for that colleague or the team or your boss but also you are in a way and as the team scale or as proximity uh, increases like the empathy reduces and the loyalty reduces as an effect 
which is super important, you become a number. Thousands of professionals have experienced similar situations where their loyalty and dedication were met with unexpected layoffs or restructuring. This phenomenon has given rise to what can be called as loyalty paradox, the disparity between the loyalty expected from employees and the loyalty demonstrated by the company. You can be as loyal as you wish, or as lovely javely and sing kumbaya for your firm. It doesn't mean that there's gonna be reciprocation. Reciprocation happens when you get a paycheck every month, but it doesn't mean that the loyalty extends beyond those months. You're best basically getting paid for the month you're doing your work. So if layoffs come, again, the transaction's gonna kick in, you need to be ready for it. That's how you basically get ready for layoffs. Your loyalty to the market, you could shift it, you could learn new things could be quite low. To the industry, maybe let's say 40%. To the brand or the firm, it's probably quite high because you joined and you put so many eggs into that single basket. To your boss, probably even higher. To your teams, even so. To the close colleagues or the friends you make as you go or you work with and you enjoy that work is even higher. Now, the other way, um, the industry doesn't care about you. The brand and firm, yeah, they care about the outputs, therefore they're gonna care like what you do. Um, your boss probably gonna meet you somewhere in the middle. I have no idea how good their relationship is. Again, bosses depend a lot and managers depend a lot on their people. Um, there are some really great managers out there. So also that depends, you know, it could be that you have a very awesome relationship and your boss would go miles for you. Your teams and close colleagues, you know, it drops off. But ultimately there is a big disparity between third parties and how you position your companies who basically give you that salary. So there's an exchange, there's transaction, there's transaction, there's numbers, and there's numbers, there's basically objective, harsh exchange of information and, and value. Third way to prepare for layoffs is really you must create the safety net. And this is super tactical advice, but a lot of the people I've seen on LinkedIn, those cases, and like, I really feel bad by the way, where people post, hey, I cannot pay rent anymore because I was struggling for six months or so trying to find a job and I ran out of my cash and I don't know what to do anymore. Like, can someone help me to get the job? You got laid off in January, let's say. Chances are that those firms are not rehiring up until now. So there is like a good, like 10 months, you should be prepared for that. If you take Maslow's pyramid of human needs, the bottom pyramids of the health, the food, the shelter, all those different bits are covered. And it's covered for you and your family or immediate dependents. That's how you could think. Minimize your expenses to bare minimum, especially when you can afford it, not can't, can afford it. Live below your means at all times. If you're earning 100 VA experience bucks, Set aside, I don't know what you can, 10%, 20%, 15%, create a safety pot for emergencies. Again, it's gonna be a stretch for a lot of people and I understand, depends on your seniority as well, how much you are earning, how much you are costing to live. You have to set aside and you have to basically create a basis for yourself to be able to do that. A lot of people are saving the money but we are not having enough emergency fund to make it liquid when you need it. The goal number three is really to create a system which works for you. So you get to that six to 10 months of savings to cover bare minimum and follow it without excuses. Quote unquote, boomer, baby steps is quite famous. Um, a lot of the people are applying that to create their financial uh, well-being or success long-term. There is a few steps, you know, it goes to save emergency fund. I think that's way too little. Um, and then save three to six months emergency fund. I don't think that's even enough. The experience layoff proof uh, finance baby steps is to stop all cost expenses. That's step number one, apart from utility bills, food, internet, and essential transport. And that actually, if you can carry that on, even if you're doing well, you're gonna save a hell lot and you can then invest if you have the emergency fund already. You can invest in your freaking pension if you want to, or stocks or whatever you wanna do. This is not financial advice, by the way. So just to draw a line here. Next, root all those profit funds, uh, besides the cost, whatever is remaining, and pay yourself towards the emergency fund to create six to 12 month runway. And that could cover, again, the baseline. But as long as you cover the baseline, you should be secure enough and confident enough with your daily decisions. Um, and then third, once emergency fund is filled up, 
resume your other saving pots, do whatever you want with that money. But again, create the baseline. This is super important and I feel like a lot of people might overlook. Thank you for sharing that. When I got laid off, I follow this guideline and I'm making another income stream on my stocks and I live with my parents on so no apartment payment. Yeah, you see, you make what you need, like Lucid Sam is exactly outlining. You basically need to prepare a plan. What if if it happens. How much money do I need to survive to get a new job? Things of that nature. Prepare that and then you're gonna cruise for it basically. It's at least not gonna be as scary. You're gonna, even your decisions day to day are gonna become much more better. What a useless advice. How do you expect people to save with no income? Of course, but it's not gonna get any better. So the point is, and the point what I was sweating in the previous points is once you are at the baseline, you got a new job, you start saving up, you start securing yourself for the times when it's gonna be hard. If the hard times don't come, amazing. You have more income, you have more finance to invest in other business. Again, this is not financial advice, but you need to use the good times to cover for the bad times which are gonna come and they're gonna vary. The dark beauty of layoffs is that they could happen at any point. So my point here was that you need to keep developing your skills. Let's say all those folk, literally thousands, employees laid off in February was 39,000. In January, 89,000. Um, how many of them are designers? Maybe 5%, but let's just for the sake of it say 10%. We don't know exactly. But let's say they rejoined the workforce and they're looking for a job. Some of them obviously got severance pay, so they might took some breaks, but it doesn't matter. Across the different months, they rejoined the active candidate listings and they became your competition. So even if you are getting laid off here, you're gonna have competition from previous months. So the market is even more saturated because of the layoffs and it's gonna persist until we're probably in January 2022 state, where it's very few layoffs happening. If you are in a good state, or if you're even fearing layoffs, you should start doubling down on learning, strengthening your portfolio, giving back to the community, learning new skills into AI, emerging tech, AR, VR, metaverse type of, like anything you can think of which would make you stand out from the actual mass is gonna benefit you. I literally copied this today as an example from UK-based nothing burger. I mean a company which is not fang or anything like not quote unquote super desirable, cool and stuff like that, you know, hyper hyped, overhyped uh, type of position. It was like a name I, I never heard it before, likely nobody else heard before. And in the Vin UK, which is way smaller market than US, let's say, or anywhere else, that position had, and this is UX designer, midweight, um, not a senior role, had almost 300 to 68 candidates. And a lot of them have bachelor degrees, master's degrees. Those are really relevant. Nobody cares about what everybody's going to care about is skills and projects. The actual case studies showing that you can do the work is exactly what matters and kind of makes you exactly like desirable candidate. Of course, resume even can be enriched with that too and the peripherals for hiring too, so you get much better. And let's see, even if we rebuild this curve, it's kind of looking like this, right? Roughly speaking, it looks like we're on a downtrend and it looks like we're on that long tail. We're not riding the peak anymore. We're somewhere here, let's say. I hope personally that it's just gonna trail off like this. The actual hiring, it's kind of like, let's say it's gonna pick up like this until, this is the design and public anxiety kicking in for me, <laughs> until the layoffs happen again. Um, but you get my point, it's kind of like those trends probably are gonna become even faster even with velocity and they might be smaller, but I feel like we are in a good place where perhaps ne mid next year, let's just round it up like that, there should be more openings, hopefully, and the company should start rehire. As I said in the beginning of the live stream, a lot of the companies took advice from other companies, mimicked the same ways, they over-optimized because that's inevitable. If you say, let's just cut 10% so we have 10% less cost, you're naturally gonna cut out some of the things which are very fundamental and which are gonna overwork the remaining uh, workforce. And they're gonna start rehiring slowly by slowly, but it's up to you to be ready for the future. And my point with this, or with all of this kind of presentation live stream, is that if you are gonna be getting a job sometime between now 
or you have a job already and before we start to hit that slope of you know of issues you need to set yourself up for success nobody else is going to set yourself up for success and those four things were meant to do exactly that